Hey, good morning, everyone. Trackman44 here. Hey, you know, you really went into some weird things sometimes. I've been doing air conditioning work for getting really close to 50 years, you know, and uh, first time I've ever come across something like this residentially. Uh, commercially, is a little different story, you know, but uh, this is really cool. I'm going to show you what we got. I'm in the, the basement of my father-in-law's old house. I installed this probably 12, maybe 13 years ago or so, and it's, it's had some issues. We had a bad gas valve. We had a bad control board, uh, but we've never had a situation like this. My one brother-in-law is living in the house currently and uh, called me and told me he's got a pretty bad rattle and everything inside the blower and he doesn't have any air conditioning. Well, I took out all the blower mounting bolts after we slid the, the blower housing out of the cavity of the furnace under there. And lo and behold, I have never in my life seen a situation to where the blower shaft itself broke off and remains inside the blower wheel. It's time for a new motor. We're going to take this off, run to supply house, and pick up probably a third horse, multi-speed, 115-volt motor, come back and install it, and it should be good to go. Yeah, this is just a universal cradle that holds that together. you got to pay attention to how far this is from that, because if you stick it with the motor too far this way or too far that way, there'll be too much pressure on the shaft, or the motor housing will actually rest up against the, um, the blower wheel and give you a problem. And like I said earlier, this is just a standard... Um, multi-speed motor and it's unusual that it's a half horsepower in this small of a furnace but it's never been changed this will all fall apart <laughs> in all these years i've never had a motor fail like that ever It's got to be a failure in the quality of the material that made that blower shaft. I want to verify and make sure that hub is definitely nice and tight. It's actually just pressed to that inner housing. So that's nothing wrong there. A lot of times what will happen, these fan blades themselves will actually separate from the, 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 the hub or the center housing that's attached to the hub. And you'll get rattling and hammering carrying on because those things are actually rattling up against that uh, piece of material there. So there's going to be a universal a universal replacement. We're going to change the capacitor too. You never want to change the blower motor and not the capacitor. Simply because now the motors are changing so dramatically from brand to brand that sometimes the same horsepower in a motor from one manufacturer will not have the same capacitor that goes with the same horsepower of another manufacturer. i got to verify what the color coding is on this. The browns are always the capacitor. Yellow is common on this one. Black, blue, and red is high, medium, and low. So yellow is common. This one here, white's going to be common. These assembly bolts, we just cut them off. And we'll slide this up pretty close to the end. See, another thing, if you get it too far off of where it's supposed to be, you can't get the blower wheel centered up in the blower housing. Nice and tight, and then we double check everything. Check and see if it's an oilable motor, which typically the replacements are not. If it's an oilable motor, you have to install this to where the oil plugs are accessible from the front or from the top. If you put it in upside down where the oil holes on the bottom, of course, you know, it's not good. Never snug them up real tight until you've got all of them in alignment. Now we center the blower wheel up inside the blower housing by slipping it. See how far it'll move on the shaft. All right. Now we've got to split that difference and put it in the middle. And that's two th it does two things. That gives you balance on the system, but it also controls the amount of air that goes in or enters the, uh, the return air from the return air cavity to the blower. Now you can be off just a little bit. It's not rocket science, but you should be close. <clears throat> Get that set screw good and tight. There's a nice flat spot on the shaft. Give it a spin, make sure. All right, now we gotta figure out the wiring. Like I say, we have the browns, which is always going to be the, the run capacitor. These are what's called a permanent split capacitor motor, meaning, well, they abbreviated a PSC. And what that means is the capacitor stays in the circuit all the time. All the time it's running, all the time it's energized, 
that capacitor is actually being used. And the capacitor actually controls the amount of amperage that goes through the motor or the motor consumes. If you put a capacitor on that's too big or too little, you're going to vary the amount of amperage that that, that motor is supposed to consume and you'll burn the motor out. Too much or too little, either one. And we're going to change this capacitor, but I'm gonna hang the wires on it just to get them out of my way for right now. I've got a new capacitor in here. It looks like a flat one. That's a 10 microfarad, by the way. So we gotta tie this into the old harness. The wiring combination, according to the diagram, yellow is common. This is gonna be low, this is going to be medium. Blue is medium and black is high. That's fairly standard with most universal replacement motors. And if not, it'll have the same stuff except for have additional an additional color orange for a uh, for a different speed like a medium high or a medium low and it'll also sometimes have white for common so we have to cut this guy off right here because we have this molex molded plug that we need to plug back into that so now we have to do is pick the right wires and install them we said yellow was common and white was common on the old one, so yellow goes to white on this particular one. I failed to bring my tripod today, so my brother-in-law is acting as the tripod. He's actually holding the camera. So if the video quality is poor, you and I can blame him. How's that? I was gonna ask you what that sound was I hear, but I, I figured it out. Is it uh, the dog? No, it's my uh, robo back. He's stuck, oh. he's stuck on probably the uh, chair. I got you. Now, when you make these connections, you wanna make sure that uh, you double check them, give them a little bit of a, a jerk. You don't have to pull on them like crazy because you will pull them out of there. But uh, you want to make sure that they're secure. Once they get in place in here and you get them zip tied in the position, there's going to be no pressure on them whatsoever. But you still want them to be a nice and secure connection because this job is to, at this connection, is to pass electrons from one wire to the other. So the best way to do it is have a good, secure, tight connection. If not, you increase the resistance, which increases the amps and will cause um, a failure at that particular point. It'll actually smoke that wire. If, you, if it's gonna fail, you want it to fail right now where you're here putting this stuff together. They make these new connectors, I've been seeing them advertised, where you um, slip the wires in there, then you heat them with a uh, cigarette lighter and it melts some solder. And at the same time, it melts um, a protective sheath over the top of them. I might put those on my Christmas list, see if I can get some of those. Those actually look pretty cool. Of course, I guess I have to start smoking. I don't have a lighter. <laughs> don't need a lighter to light pilot lights anymore. Everything's electronic spark ignition. So you used to carry matches, lighters, everything in the truck. Okay, now we got high speed, which is black on both of them. These things automatically flip between high speed and low speed for heating and for cooling. You have to have a higher velocity or a higher volume of air or a higher quantity at a higher velocity of air in air conditioning because the cool air is so much heavier than the lighter warm air. So you run the blower in the low speed in the winter time. Of course, that's the older new furnaces. Now the new new furnaces, everything comes out of the circuit board and you can select a speed that you wanna use for heating and cooling in the middle range. Okay, so I'd say we're good. The only thing we have now is there may be something hot on that wire at some particular point in time, so we'll just close that one off. Yeah, that's a 10 microfarad too. That'll become the weakest link if you change the blower motor and leave the capacitor. All right, well, we verified that the uh, the rotation is correct, but we had a little bit of an issue. The orange wire that I thought uh, was not used was actually on the circuit board flipped for use in the air conditioning mode. So whenever I wired it in for the, uh, for the correct wiring, what I thought it would normally be, the blower did not want to come on for the air conditioning. So we just shut the video off, went about the business figuring out why, and that was exactly why. Because the original motor is a four-speed motor, and no matter what position you have any of the dip switches or the jumpers in, no matter what, one of the speeds is going to come on. The replacement motor is a three-speed, so we have that one extra wire, and that one extra wire has to be the single thing out of the circuit board that energizes the blower in the air conditioning mode. So that's a long story, but that's what happened. So at any rate, now we're gonna go ahead and shut this all off because we know it's going to function. We're going to slide this all in, tidy this up by tying it into a nice neat bundle to where nothing will get drawn into the blower, uh, you know, and create shorts or something like that or another hazard, and then we're gonna be done. There's little rails up inside here. Now this particular one should have a pair of screws that actually holds it in place. I have to get this fitted into those rails and just slide it right in. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. Okay, yeah, I missed the back, the back slot on this side. 
Like I said, the next thing we have to make sure that we don't create an issue by sucking the wires into the bore. Nothing to this air conditioner stuff, is there? Well, that's about as neat as we can get. Well, guys, I guess it's like they say in the uh, in a rock and roll song, another one bit the dust, you know what I mean? So uh, we got this one put to rest. I went ahead and ran outside, put the gauges on the um, on the condenser and went ahead and checked the refrigerant. Uh, it's an R410A and it's the same age as what the furnace is. And uh, just kind of checked it and everything, you know, make sure everything is copacetic and uh, it's all looking good. So once again, um, we are completely done with this one here. And my brother-in-law is just happy as can be. And uh, you know what, this is Trackman 44. And I'm out of here, guys.